<laughs> make a tutorial for walking. Yeah, I'll probably do that probably later. But I think the basics is kind of... I think I could probably just go through the basics real quick. Something super fast. Because you can do this in Clip Studio Paint. But the basics of walking, or at least doing a walking tutorial, is basically picking the right poses. So let me just get in a basic. Yeah, we're gonna make a super fast stick figure tutorial. This is gonna be my, I'd say, new uh, timeline here. Shit, I wasn't supposed to do that. This is supposed to be like a new layer. Come on, new layer. Come on, new layer. This new layer. Yeah. Yeah. New animation folder. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, walk animations are pretty straightforward, or at least they're not straightforward since I'm doing the tutorial. So, basically, the key to making well basic walk animations, please. Okay, so these principles of animation can be applied to anything. It can work on paper, it can work on Clip Studio Paint, it can work on Animate, it can work on literally anything. So, basically, the key to having good animations is to have good poses. And I'm just gonna do a super fast, this is pose one. And this is the left leg facing you, and this would be the person's right leg facing you. So on frame two, I'll make a new animation cell. So, yeah, we'll make a new animation cell. This is the other side of the walk, the other leg moving. And you'll notice the head is in the rough same position here. It's just the legs have swapped. So, in between frame one and frame two, and I'll just refine you so you can just see the hips a little easier. So in between frame one and frame two, we have what's called an in-between frame. New animation style here. And in that in-between frame, you've got well, the actual step here. Got them stepping forward, and the head is slightly higher because basically your leg's standing. So, if you play this right now, he's currently stepping. So, boom. Currently made one step. Yeah, let me turn off the onion so you can see it here. So, step one. Yeah, it's a little tough to see. But bring it no. That's because this frame. This is on the step frame actually. Because the blue leg is supposed to be stepping, actually. So we're since the blue leg is forward. It's the one that's actually supposed to hit the ground. So right now, the blue leg is stepping forward. And so we need an in-between frame to loop back to two to one. So you can either A, this is a general basic technique where you can copy the frame, copy, and just, uh, copy the original frame so you can use the onion skin to see where the leg's gonna go. And this is actually where the real step's supposed to go. And make you a new animation cell. That would be cell three. And heck, you could even copy the original frame here. Copy. Paste. 
Yet, you probably can actually. So you just copy the layer, and then that's the drawing, and as as opposed to the actual frame. There's a difference between at least in Clip Studio the drawing and the frame. All right, then we can just delete this original loop. Where's the orange leg go? So basically, the two legs are basically your close leg and your far leg so the blue leg that's your far that's your far leg and the uh red leg is the close leg so right now in between this the red leg's actually going to be passing from here to here so when you're drawing in between this it's good to just have his knee pushing forward first. The knee pushes first because most of the weight is in your butt here. Because the butt's the pivot point of your leg. Then it goes up to your knee, and then it goes up to your calf, and then it goes up to your ankle. That's how the pivot points of your legs go. And a good rule of thumb when it comes to just animating body parts in general is to try to use joints like pivot point joints to move first like lead with the pivot point joints because say here you have the shoulder the shoulder is moving the arm and the elbow is moving the forearm and that goes up to the wrist and each of that you know you know, explode to each little deal. Next. So, right now you're seeing a basic step. You're seeing the step. And you're doing the same thing with the other leg. Where you're leading with the... You're leading with the elbow, or the knee, I mean. And the leg is crossing crossing to get forward. So one, two, three, one, two. Then you could pretty much just set up the loop so it's right here. And so far, so good. You're seeing a guy stepping. So when it's up like this, when they're actually like making the step, that's where their head's slightly higher because they're stepping. Most of their weight's going on the straight leg. Yeah, I can do that. I can post it on my YouTube. Yeah, I can post it on my YouTube. I'll just uh, do like a little clip deal. I'll uh, remember to clip this. So this leg, it goes straight forward. Boom. Next step. Boom. Now then, here's where you're doing basically your editing and smoothing stuff. So, before it can hit there, so in order to transition from frame one to, well, frame one A, basically, you're actually going to be having a character actually do the step. So we're gonna make a new animation cell I don't know why it's called layer two, but we're gonna do that. So, on this step, this is where the foot's gonna be when they step. When they step, the knee is going to be slightly bent, and the body is actually going to be slightly lower because they're stepping. And the other leg, it's tilting up because the toe is pivoting from the ground, like it's lifting from the ground. So this is the end of the toe, it's lifting. And then the leg's more straight when it's lifting because now the weight's on the other leg now. So, do do. So you're seeing loose, step, pass through, up. And now you're doing 
the other one where you're having it step. I usually try to have it so I try to get both the leg actions done each way before I do in between the next type of in between here. So you're gonna repeat the same thing, new animation cell. This time, the red leg's gonna step. Step right here, then slightly lower. And one, two, three, boom. And you could even, if you're just learning, you could always, uh, if you're just learning, you can, if it's a little too tough, you can always just focus on one body part at a time and do the other body parts and other layers. And, you know, that's totally okay. There's no one way to do an animation. And the loop's a little sloppy, but it'll be fixed soon. Shoopity doo. All right, what lay around this one? You're straight, so. Leg is here. Now then, we're doing the other in-betweens here. So, as it steps here, now you're transitioning to going from here to here. So, you create a new layer, or new animation cell. And what the body's gonna be doing now is it's actually going to hang at the top it's actually going to hang in the air for a bit so the head's actually going to stay in the same position and the legs actually going to continue swinging and slightly overshoot their step it'll be like this and a good little little thing to help you out is draw like little arcs and circles to Keep yourself, keep your legs nice and loose. We got you. Now we have, let's see. Okay. We have blue going here. And a cool little thing to do is to make sure, a cool way to like make your foot feet look natural is to try and curve their arcs too, like have their toes curve in an arc. And that's how it'll go. Now you're doing it for the next side. Did I do the right side? Okay, let me just nudge some. Again, these techniques can be used for any animation program, whether it's Flash or, you know, Photoshop or anything like that. Point is that you are animating here. These techniques can go on anything. Do, pass, step, pass. Oh, so it's time for loop. So, let me just open this up here. We're pretty much making the end of the loop here. So, we make a new animation cell, and we're again having it pass again and having you hang at the top of your step. And we're having which side is it? Yeah, the blue side. Blue side, again, overshooting. Do some arcs, have it slightly overshoot your leg, and have the red leg slightly curve on the floor as the toes are bending and launching themselves off. As you go, you have a nice basic walk cycle. Oh yeah, a good cartoon walk's a nice super basic thing. So you have a nice, just straightforward march. 
And the arms are obviously... Well, the arms are pretty different, too. Like, you have the one arm on one side. Then it's on the other side. Arms cross. Boom. Yeah, when they're uh, when the when they're on the up layer, I prefer to have them slightly cross over to make more silhouette sense. Like I like to uh, make sure that they're not exactly straight. Like usually, like normally, you could probably like have them just straight down, and that's doable. But I personally prefer to have it have the elbow slightly, slightly back, just so it has a little more distinct silhouette and personality and stuff like that. And with the arm, it's actually, you know, it's kind of straightforward. It's kind of, I'd say, the opposite, I'd say, with legs, because... As you know, let's see, boom, step forward. All right, then you just curve. Let's see. Oh, I know what's up. So actually, Okay, I know what's up. So, this this point was actually supposed to overshoot. So, on the step, arms actually need to overshoot. Oops. Sorry, the maximum length of the arm is supposed to be all the way out here. I'd say, like, nudge this all the way up here. So, and arms down here. Back, forward, back. Yeah. Gotta stay in some arcs, so. The legs, or at least the arm, is in a better position. Like it's nice and smooth looking. Yeah, my onion skin's a little small. But I can make this work. Yeah, sometimes you'll just need to just use your head when it comes to a lot of this stuff. Okay, they're supposed to actually be more overshot like this. Now, on the step, you overshoot. That's how it goes. Now, I think I can just get to step forward. And a lot of the uh, red arms a bit hard to see. So a good little thing to do. Another little way you can just improve your stuff to kind of just make it so the arms just well past it. And that'll work. Boom. Yeah, it needs to be a lot lower. Remember, you're going on arcs. So, at the peak of the circle, that's like where the wrist is lowest. And 
this onion skin's not as good as I'd like for it to be, but I'm working with it. All right, more arcs. And that should work. More straightforward. Now on the step, needs to be, the arms should be at its widest. And obviously this is a more cartoony. Let's see. All right, almost done. All right, again, you lead with the elbows. Yep, elbows will be back here. Yeah, and now I'm kind of just quieting out because this is pretty much, I'd say the rest of it's kind of straightforward. Hopefully it's not like too out there. Like, let me know if I'm losing you. Uh, I believe that should be a sensible loop. So let's try it out. So something's up with this arm here. Eh, I could put on Instagram if I want to. Except Instagram doesn't accept GIFs. It accepts MP4s. Fours. Yeah, this isn't as clear as I'd like for it to be. Also... Yeah. Okay. One arm's not as far as it should be. Let's see. All right, and it should be decent. I can always like look at my books here. Yeah, another like recommendation is to check out the Animator Survival Kit. It's a really good book for basically making animation and just making animated loops. And whenever I feel like I'm stuck or I'm missing something, I always look to this to kind of just see, okay, I did this. This looks kind of weird. What's up? So kind of just snapping back and just double checking with myself and just see what I, what kind, what did I make? What kind of mistake did I make here? So. Actually, nothing. It just needs to be smoother. Ah, oh, well. What do I use for animating? I, on this program, I'm using Clip Studio Paint. This is Clip Studio Paint EX, actually. This is like the big, more expensive pro version. 
And, you know, there's other animation programs out there. Krita is a free to play program. You can, uh, you know, you can download Krita, and that's a nice free, it has animation features. Um, I write this down in my uh, resources list on my website. So you can always just check that out. Um, what else? What else? Other animation programs. Oh, yeah, A Sprite. I use A Sprite to make my pixel art animation for all my stuff. And the same principles go for a running animation, it's just, you know, you're. You're making more large movements. Let's see. That's 10, 10 frame animation. Why is it so choppy? Ah, I know what's up. So it's supposed to be at eight. I'm gonna put you on seven, and that's how it goes. Okay, no, you're supposed to be on eight. Yeah, it's a little bit of a issue. Oh well. Oh, well, nothing's really stopped me from being a game dev. RPG Maker's pretty cheap. Plus, you could learn Unity and, uh, you know, just take some small things from the Unity store. Obviously, don't claim that it's yours. Oh, Ace Sprite isn't on there? Well, I'll uh, put it on there. But if you want, it's there. It's... You know, it's a $20 program, so it's pretty cheap. I might as well just put in Krita for its animation features. I could put in Eclipse Studio Paint if you want to. Because that's the one I'm using. Come on, load up. And that's all of them. Oh yeah, if you want to learn animation, one, practice animation. And obviously look up more YouTube tutorials. And that's how that goes. Uh, this is my rough, super fast tutorial on making animation. I could probably like figure out some more in-depth stuff like how to apply this to more smooth stuff and how to do this in like more of a budget like oh hey you only have four frames to make this work how do you make it work which drawings do you pick those type of things and obviously you could like do some more smoother things like you could add another layer here and let's see which way are you going? Yeah, you're going here. Oh. Yeah, you can make things smoother if you want. Like, put this here.
Like do a subtle toe tap. Boom. Again, you're leading with the elbow. Like halfway there. And you can like do smoother deals like that. And you can add more frames. I believe this one's a 16 frame loop. And technically it's only with uh eight drawings. But that's like you can do with 16 drawings or eight drawings if you want to make it more smooth. Because the uh, smoother you want your animation, the more frames you'll have. And the more frames you'll have, the slower your animation is. So that's kind of the general rule of thumb when it comes to animation in general. It's just, you know, more frames equals slower. And more frames will not automatically equal good when it comes to animation. Sometimes animation will look too smooth for the movement that you'll need. Like if you want, if you want to do something like a punch, doing like all 16 frames of an animation is going to look like weird mud as opposed to doing like two really good punch attacks. So you know, that's how that goes. Anyway, that's been my TED talk. I need to go to sleep now. I will chat you all later. And I'll probably upload a YouTube video maybe like either Saturday or something. I'll 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 see how fast I can clip this and get it out. But anyway, I'll chat you all later. And thank you for watching my stream.